Hi friends, it's Monica and let's rank some bookish tropes. Ever since I did my first tier list, I've been waiting to do another one and I thought this was a really good idea to focus on book tropes and do another tier list ranking. I chose a lot of bookish romance tropes since they are the most popular ones that I could find and I did include some general like fantasy tropes as well as some general bookish ones. So before I get into my tier list ranking, I'm going to explain the different levels that I have here. You should be able to see the tier list ranking on your screen now. So first I have got tier here and that's just the best of the best of the bookish tropes that I adore. Then below that we have the my loves category so they are not what I would be like my all-time favorites but I still really enjoy these bookish tropes when I do see them or find them in a book. And then in the middle we have it can work so this category is these bookish tropes really depends on the author and the writing and the different genre of whatever trope that's taking place here and then sometimes it's not working in some cases but if it's really well written and all of that that I just said it will go into this category. Then at number four we have a needs more effort. Bookish tropes in this category are not ones I would necessarily like all the time but it's not that I hate them. The trope itself needs some reworking and maybe one random book will be the star of this trope. I think when we get through this video you'll see more of what I mean. <laughs> and then at the bottom here we have please disappear which are bookish tropes that I just do not like at all and I would wish they would not be in existence at all but <laughs> anyways let's just get right to it okay so the first one we have here are prophecies or quests and with prophecies or quests when i was making this bookish trope i was thinking about all those fantasy books that have that old wise woman that makes a prediction that our main character is going to be the savior of the land and all that as well as quests. Again, in fantasy books when our characters or our group of characters are given a huge quest that they have to go on. So with those two, I would say that's honestly one of my favorite tropes. My personal favorite tropes, but I don't think it would be god tier for me since the prophecy thing can be overdone, but in my personal taste, I do really appreciate when I do see the prophecy slash quest in a fantasy book. So my next trope I have here is a romance one and it's the one bed trope. This one I'm debating if it's either one of my favorites, one of my loves, or it's something that needs a little bit of reworking sometimes, but since it's like a classic romance trope, I'm gonna put it as one of my loves. And then my next trope is insta-love and instantly it's please disappear because I do not like insta-love. There needs to be that angst that built up and that tension and chemistry and banter between our main couple in a book. If it's just insta-love and there's no build up to that and maybe the characters had like a pre-established relationship before the book started, in that case it makes sense but like again you still need that build up, you need to learn more about why this pair would work or like why they have such a strong attraction to each other. Bring back all the build up and the tension because I think that's like the best part of reading a romantic relationship. It's that build up that you get to see between the two characters. And then we have slow burn romance. That's got tier for me. <laughs> slow burn is what I was just talking about. You have the angst and like the tension building up and sometimes you don't even know if this couple will get together. Sometimes there's obstacles in the way and once they get together, it's like that payoff is so sweet to read. Our next bookish trope is found family and this is honestly another god tier for me. I really love found family because with this small group of characters, you can see them coming from different backgrounds that have different personal stories. But then they somehow have to work together on a mission against their common enemy and it's really fun to see the relationship grow between all of these characters one-on-one -on -one and as well as the group. And then we have second chance romance as our next one. I think I'm gonna put this right in the middle that it can work if done properly. With a second chance romance, I don't think I've read any particular book with this trope just yet. 
when I think about this trope a little bit more, I believe it can work out if it's presented properly and you see the development of the relationship. Our next trope is I'm not like other girls. And this one needs to disappear because it's really prominent in YA books specifically and I believe it should just disappear because I've read a lot of YA books with this trope and some books that come to mind would be The Hunger Games, even A Court of Thorns and Roses, The Selection series with America. I don't think that I'm like the other girls trope adds anything to the book except annoying the reader so it needs to disappear. So the next trope we have is secret identity or being a secret heir and again another character that comes to mind would be Aelin from the Throne of Glass series and I think it can work for this one. It's not my absolute favorite and <laughs> count how many times I said trope in this video but I feel like it can be overdone now in YA fantasy or in fantasy books in general and I think in other genres it can work out as something unique and unexpected for our main character if they have no idea if they are actually a royal princess or um a really key figure in something huge. So then next we have mutual pining. This is when two people in a pairing or a couple have feelings for each other but they also think that the other party is not interested in them so they see their attraction for each other from afar and they admire each other from afar. And I think with this one it can work. I think during the buildup of a romance, if a mutual pining is included in that buildup, I would really enjoy this trope. So it can work out. And then we have the book love and character trope and that's god tier because I love books and I love when our characters love books and it's like kind of an inception and it speaks to my bookish heart. <laughs> Unlikely friendship. I really like that one. It's one of my favorites. I think that with unlikely friendships, you wouldn't expect when you think about two characters with such opposite personalities that they wouldn't possibly form a friendship, but then out of nowhere they do. And it's really nice and sweet to read about. Next, we have right person, wrong time. It can work out. So with the right person, wrong time, it's like, oh, we met each other, but at this point in both of our lives, it's not the right timing. So then later on you see them in the future and then they're like, oh, oh my gosh, we bumped into each other. Maybe now it's the right time. It's like picking up back that old romance and you seeing like maybe new sparks coming out of the old sparks that they felt before. And I feel like that's a really fun trope to read about. Heist. I really love heist in any type of book, whether that be a crime book or a thriller book. If it's in a fantasy book like Six of Crows. When there's a heist, I just love it in general. So I'm putting it as one of my loves. <laughs> Age gap. I think it needs more effort. I haven't read many romances that have like a huge age gap, but I think if it's done properly and not inappropriately, it can work. It just needs more effort to be seen into it. But in fantasy books, it's thrown out there as a common occurrence. But again, I still think there should be a little bit more thought in general to this trope. And then we have soulmates or one true love as a trope. It's one of my favorites because it's always like romantic to say, oh, I have my one true love with me now after all these years of searching for them. And yes, I'm referring back to fantasy books and couples. It's just really fun for me to read that type of trope in a fantasy book. Banter, god tier. With banter, I love having all the different types of banters between all the different characters, whether that be a friendship or romantic partnership. It's really fun to see the characters just tease each other and have fun with each other in their dialogue and actions. Absent or dead parents. It needs more effort. The absent dead parents trope is something that is brought up constantly and if there is a good parental figure, I think that is really nice to see. I think with the absent dead parents trope, it can work if it's done properly. Overall, I would not want to see this trope more. Childhood friends to lovers. It can work out with childhood friends to lovers and I think with 
spoiler alert for Shadow and Bone with Mal and Alina. With that build up that's happening, not only the books but also the TV show, how the TV show has improved on Mal's character, the childhood friends to lovers trope can work out really well and it makes you really happy to see them form that friendship and then have that trust and confidence in each other and then they turn into a romantic relationship and it's nice and sweet. Morally Gray characters. I really love Morally Gray characters and I want to see more of them. <laughs> Opposites attract. It can work out but it also cannot work out and one couple in particular that I have in mind that I recently read with the people we meet on vacation with Poppy and Alex they were the opposite of track kind of couple they were nice together but they were kind of boring for me to read and then on the flip side I'm thinking also from the Throne of Glass series with Lorcan and Alid they're like opposites but I felt their relationship build up was more well done than Poppy and Alex but completely different settings. One's a contemporary and then the other is a fantasy. So take it for what you will, but I think this trope itself, it can work out, but sometimes it doesn't. Love triangle, please. Love triangle needs more effort. I don't think it needs to completely disappear off the map. I think love triangles can work out if done in the right way. And of course, what comes to mind is the Twilight Saga with Edward, Jacob, and Bella. With that love triangle, which is a whole mess. I think with love triangles, they do need to have a little bit more thought put into them because sometimes they are just not working. And then you love one obvious love interest that's better for our main character and then the other ones maybe okay for our main character, but I still really do like seeing love triangles in books because they can be really fun. <laughs> Okay, and then next we have MC sacrificing themselves and when the main character is really self-sacrificial, it can be quite brave in their mind and saying that everything's on their shoulders but it needs more effort put in but it also can work out if the main character does end up getting killed <laughs> and I think that's a really huge shock value bookish trope so it does need to make sense if this main character does die and sacrifices themselves for the rest of their friends and family or kingdom or land. So I think sometimes it can be quite entertaining to see that journey but at the end of the day it's also at, with the thought of you don't need to be in this alone since usually the main character has a lot of support with them. Okay and then anti-hero characters is one of my favorites. With these type of characters, sometimes you don't know if they will be the hero or if they don't even see themselves as the bad guy, they think they're the hero and it brings a lot of complex internal character struggles and I really love seeing that when it does happen and I think it's quite rare that we see an anti-hero character so I do like it when it does pop up. The Chosen One, it can work. I don't hate the chosen one trope, although a lot of people really really dislike the chosen one trope. I don't hate it, but one thing with the chosen one trope, it does have to be unique. But if the main character is really reluctant to be the chosen one, I think that is also a good dynamic with being like the reluctant hero and being the chosen one trope since I just really in general like that internal struggle that the main character has. The fake dating trope and I really like the fake dating trope. One book that comes to mind is The Love Hypothesis. I have really, really enjoyed that one. It's really fun to see the main characters struggle in front of their friends or co-workers or family being like, okay, this is my partner, but then they're not really dating, but then they have secret feelings for each other. It's really fun. It's really nice and entertaining. Forbidden Love. It's also one of my favorites, but it's not like my god tier favorite but forbidden love i didn't put this trope on the list but forbidden love reminds me of star-crossed lovers and with that in mind it's fun to see who is an enemy to our main character fall in love with her main character it's really nice to see that dynamic play out memory loss i think it could either go into needs more effort or it could completely disappear but i think i'm gonna put into a need more effort since the memory loss trope if that's the entire premise of the book, it is really 
sad and heartbreaking for a character to go through that and it can be really fun to see how they learn about their past or their forgotten past. Okay, and then this next one is Marriage of Convenience. I really love it. It's fun to see two characters who don't think they're gonna get married get married and be like, um, we're married now and we have to actually be a married couple because of whatever has happened. And it's really fun to see that dynamic play out as well. A tragic past. I'm gonna put this one into a can work. I think with each character that does pop up in a book, you can think that they have a tragic past or they had maybe a really great upbringing, but then something has happened to them along their life and that can then affect them. But I think what this trope is about is like someone has like a huge, disastrous, really sad, heartbreaking past that it takes over their life and it consumes every action and thought and behavior that they have. I think when it's like that, it can get a little bit overdone. However, I do think if there is really good reason to have that tragic event or past for a character and it leads to great character development or great reveals in the book, it can be really, really valuable in a book. Enemies to Lover. No hesitation there. It's got to your love enemies to lover or hate to love, rivals to lovers. I don't think there's anything else to say about here. It's just one of my favorite romantic tropes, especially in fantasy. And I don't think I've read any enemies to lovers romance books, but I do want to pick up, I think it's The Hating Game. I know that book has a huge following and a lot of people love it, but some people really dislike it. So I do think I'm interested in reading that romantic contemporary book. However, with Enemies to Lovers, it's just one of my favorites and is god tier for me. <laughs> Magic School. That's one of my favorite uh, settings in a fantasy book where we have a main character training or learning about their magic or they're training for something larger in their world. It's really fun to see that development and you get that dynamic of being in school, having the, your school struggles, and also having most of the time an overarching mystery and problem that our main character, they need to solve. It's always really fun to have that setting in general. So this is my final tier list ranking of bookish tropes. This was really fun to do. I really enjoy filming these videos because it kind of takes into account of what your own personal opinions and thoughts are on specific things and maybe it could be a little bit controversial or not but most of the time it's just fun to see where you are with your own personal taste bookish tropes in mind it's fun to see where your dislike for things come from and where your love for things come from but I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads. I'll see y'all soon.